this is Nathan Stuke from uh, Whisper University, and thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, today we have Ryan Peterson with uh, American Tower. Um, gotten to know Ryan quite a bit over over the past couple of years, and I'm excited to have him uh, on on the call with us. Uh, as you may be able to see, I'm on the road today, so we, we have pulled over. I'm not the one driving, but we'll see how well uh, mobile internet works for this. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it works well. You have good service. Uh, the other thing you'll see is that I'm kind of missing something. You know, now that I'm I'm on the road. And I have this camera right in my face with my laptop. I uh, I managed to kiss my uh, my door of my uh, uh, my Tesla in the garage. I turned around, and no blood, no nothing, didn't even hit my lips. Just now, I got to go have my my tooth fixed. So I, I can I feel very conscious about having my tooth uh, missing and out of my mouth. But hopefully, uh, everybody can look past that. And uh, we just appreciate everybody being able to join us. And so, so Ryan, tell us a little bit about yourself. What's, what's something interesting, something we may not know if we were to say, like, read your, your resume or something? Yeah, well, appreciate uh, joining here, Nathan. Uh, yeah, so just, just something you may not know about me is I started with a company right around nine years ago. Candidly, I had no idea how the wireless industry worked. You know, as a lot of people, you drive down the street, you, you, see, the, you see a tower, and you think, oh, it's got to be an AT&T to own tower, or Verizon own tower, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, just came into, came into this business very green, but that was nine years ago. So I've been able to kind of go through it. But, yeah, so uh, another thing you meant, Aloma, yeah, I did my grad school in Italy. I was out there for a year. So I was, oh, wow. I was able to uh, learn a little bit of, of Italian out there while doing graduate Oh, work. cool. Yeah. Cool. And what what was your degree in then? What did you what did you do? It was my MBA in uh, leadership MBA? development. Okay. Yep. Oh man, I should have thought about that when I got my MBA. Like, <laughs> where in the world would I want to go to do this? That, that's awesome. I, I was looking all around, and they had it was actually through the University of Iowa, and they had a one year program out in Italy, and I applied to a bunch of different schools, and I got you got to be a fool not to take this opportunity. To, yeah. To spend absolutely. a year in Italy that's and awesome. get an education. Yeah. So it was really yeah. really really great wow. experience. That's so cool. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. So, so when you started with American Tower, um, did you start driving around like this all the time? Where you're always <laughs> looking up at the towers. That's, people make fun of me for driving like that. I'm always looking at towers. Yeah, that's how it. That's how it started. It's really funny because you don't really notice them until you're in the business. You know, obviously you right. drive down, you do notice them. And even with my son today, I've like, I'll, like, hey, what kind of tower is that? What kind of tower is that? <laughs> Self support? That's a monopole. That's a it's a broadcast. Right. Thing's about a thousand feet tall. That's a broadcast. And he loves it's it's kind of play a game with him where to to identify which type of tower and if it's our tower or not. Because we have a we have an app where you can see where our towers are as well. So, right, right. Like oh, that's not our tower. Don't awesome. look at that tower. No, sorry. That's a, a totally <laughs> different I spy game than I've ever thought of playing with my kids. So <laughs> it's 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 where I'm at. Ask me ten years ago if that if you thought that's where I'd be. Yeah, right. <laughs> I love. Yeah, it. so I really enjoy. So it. leading leading up to your time at, at, at uh, American Tower, how did you get there? What did, what did you do? How how did you land at American Tower? Yeah, so I'm I'm originally from uh, grew up in San Diego, so I was out there working and not to go into too much detail, change of situation. I uh, looked at new opportunities, and I had a friend living out in Boston, uh, had an extra room at her apartment, and I just picked up and moved out. Just not not okay. pursuing American Tower per se, but just moved right. out to Boston. Needed to change the uh, scenery, and then uh, enjoyed the summer when I moved out. And then came fall time; it was time to actually <laughs> look for a job, be a, potentially a you know, adult, um, and just came across American Tower. And I just read as I read more about it; it was just very interesting. Obviously, I had not as much knowledge as I do to this day about the industry, but. It really was. And then I started off as a project manager initially with American Tower, and that's where I really cut okay. my teeth on it. And really, and that was probably the best route to take because I really learned the operational side of a tower mm -hmm. company to really have to understand mm -hmm. the background. And then was in that role for a couple of years and then got recruited over to the sales side where I've been last about seven years or so. Yeah, that's awesome. So when some people say they need to change the scenery, you know, they talk about painting a room a different color or moving the furniture, but you said, okay, I'm moving from West coast to East coast. And I mean, that's a major change that that's huge weather, everything. So congratulations for being willing to do that. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been known to jump around. I did my undergrad in Chicago. I lived in Kansas okay. for a few years doing other things. So I'm, I'm known for typically just picking things up and going and, you know, I, lo I love experiencing yeah. new things like that. So it's, it's really, it's really cool. Yeah, one one of the things I've really enjoyed working with you is that you know early on when we worked with American Tower for wow it's been 
I think our first American Tower was maybe 13 years ago. It, it, it felt like every six months to a year, our sales rep changed, right? It was the new person. You're like, oh, I have to get to know this new person. But uh, we've been working together for what, almost four years now uh, yeah. and it maybe even a little longer. So it's yeah. been really, really nice to have, you know, once you understand our wireless equipment, once you understand what we're doing, then I don't have to re-explain it to the next new person that's coming in. So I think that's a, a change that American Tower made that, that was very welcome. Right? They made it very stable for WISP specific, specifically uh, and what they had. So uh, what other ways have you seen um, that American Tower is trying to help broadband uh, providers provide broadbands that's so desperately needed now? I mean, I just think we just look at a portfolio. So right now we have, read, I give or take, about 43,000 towers across the uh, – the U.S. and I'd say 60% of those are in suburban or um, rural areas. So it's really just focusing on those sites, understanding we, you know, we we to, we do our best to be proactive about understanding where the funding's coming in, where our WIS are looking to go. Obviously, it's rural areas okay. at this point where they're not trying to, China, you know, you're not looking at downtown Chicago. You know, we're not, mm-hmm. we we understand that, and so it's just developing programs that make sense for both sides. You know, we're not going to obviously with a a larger carrier, they're they're used to paying certain rates. They're used to certain structures of a of a of a deal. And again, going to you know taking a little step back here is that that's the reason I was actually the first one within our company that was solely focused on our non-national. We call them non. Mm. When, when I refer to national, I mean you know like assume yeah yeah the AT and T, Sprint, Verizon used right. to be everyone. They had the sales reps had everything, um, but I was the I was the first one they brought in to. Uh, you know, solely focus on what we call our vertical business. So it really is just understanding that business to your point. Yeah. You're like every six months at a new sales rep. So that was really one, one of the biggest steps we took is saying, Hey, this is important business. This is this critical business. Uh, you know, we need to really start to focus more on this versus, you know, the other guys, obviously all business is important to us, but it's oh, putting people enough. in places to, to, uh, to address, to address the business. Right, right. And that, that's a shift I saw for sure. Um, you know, other large tower companies, um, I remember working on a deal with one of them that I was trying to get on one tower and, and he was busy working on a 330 tower build for Verizon. So, uh, of course, I mean, I don't fault him. Of course, I was put off to the, the bottom of the list and took us six months to get our notice to proceed and all those things. And yeah. and I, I really, really like how you guys have said, no, we are WISP focused. WIS centric, and, and now we're, we're we're here to focus on you. We're not distracted by a national carrier. Um, given the fact that you you got your MBA, anything take away from from your business school that has helped you in the role that you're in? You know, I know when you think of a salesperson, you're like, yeah, but that's not a business person. But wait a minute, you have to understand my business and understand what's going on. What are some of the things that you've been able to kind of uh, apply to to your role here at American Tower? Yeah, so I think a lot of it is just understanding a business model of a customer. You know, kind of going okay. back to your, your previous point is, you know, your business model, you're not an AT&T business model. You don't have, mm. you know. Thank you for knowing areas. that. Thank you for knowing that. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, I do my best. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's, it's really just looking at what, what makes financial sense to our customers. We're not in the business to put customers out of business. We want to help your business mm-hmm. grow. So that's, that's really the way, that's really the way I view it as really just understanding, you know, just what, what makes financial sense for our customers? Not everyone is the same. And just using, you know, you guys were one of the largest calf winners, but we also worked with that are just more smaller areas. Maybe they didn't get funding or things like that, but that doesn't mean we treat them differently. It's just mm-hmm. understanding what makes financial sense and what, what makes sense to help you grow your business and, you know, how we can partner up and really make that work for both of us. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's always good to talk to somebody who, you know, when I can talk a PL and I can talk a balance sheet too and say, no, I, that isn't going to work or that is going to work or, you know, where, where, what do we need? It's nice to be able to talk to somebody that already has that experience. Um, so, so you get to talk to a lot of different WISPs and, and you, you see some of the national carriers and, and, and not as American Tower, but as Ryan. What, what are you seeing in the broadband industry? Like what, what are some trends that you see? Put your business cap on and say, hey, this is what I'm kind of seeing as I keep talking to all these WISP. Any insights out there that you see? I, I just think it's the industry becomes much more savvy, both mm-hmm. financially and, tech, and technology. Tech, I can't, t- using technology, like whatever, the word, yeah, yeah, whatever, that word, right. whatever the word would be. Apologize for that. But um, 
no, it's just because again, it's when I first started in the in you know my sales role, it was you're not seeing customers going on these barns, you're not seeing these customers going on these silos as it was mm -hmm. in the past with the WIS. I mean, we're having meaningful conversations around truly built, developing businesses versus just saying I'm just going to throw something up on a tree in the middle of the yard and hopefully serve people, you know, the neighborhood. So that's really what yeah, I, we, that's. We may or may not still have some of those, but I, I, I understand. Yeah, what you're not, that don't don't take that any for, for anyone <laughs> out there that has done that. Don't take that as a knock on on you or your no. business. But again, I think it's just. But I think where we're at now is I think it really attributes like how how developed and how much this business has really grown and shown like this is a legitimate business space to work in mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. you know saying okay yeah, I can I can offer Tony and John down the street. Ten dollar a month internet to get, you know, so so on and so forth. I'll, Tony and John still need internet. I don't want to knock them, but right. Uh, but right. yeah, so I think that's really what I that that's what I, that's what been a great part of my role is just seeing the advancement in the industry um, through the last I'd say probably yeah again five five plus years. It's really really truly developed into a a meaningful and substantial business. Yeah, yeah, and I'll I'll, I'll say it so you don't have to get in trouble for it. Um, growing up, right? We're growing up as an industry and there was nothing wrong with where we started. Um, but I remember manufacturing radios in my garage, right? I, I had to literally know what pigtail to buy and everything. And we would always shy away from a national tower company's towers. You know, we would, instead of getting on a 300 foot tower, we'd get on a 120 foot water tower because I could get on it for free or, or exchange a service. Yeah. And now our business model has developed, our marketing has developed and some people struggle with that, struggle with the change that's happening. Um, but, I mean, the pandemic has taught us the Internet is so, so important. And it's not good enough now just to, to, to barely be able to get people service. You have to get them really, really good, rock-solid service. And, you know, it was funny. When I would bring on a new employee, they would always ride with me. They would spend a day with me in the bucket truck. And I would do my site surveys, and I would ride. This is the early days. And um, I'm like, if you see a tower that's a really good tower – and we're not on it. It's because it's a it's an MS, you know, it's a large company tower. It's a national tower. The big and bad tower company. Go, yeah, big. Okay, yeah, that you said that one. So now I won't get <laughs> all of You're that's right. that's. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that was a perception for quite a while. Is that you yeah. know we don't want to deal yeah. with American Tower or any of the other guys because they're just they're going to charge us three thousand dollars a month yep. and yeah, and that's just that's really been them. my focus, my role to really yeah change yeah, that and, perception. And and now it's like, holy cow, wait a minute, the, the, the 30 customers I couldn't provide service to because I was on a 100-foot water tower, which is a 200-foot tower, I want, those I want those 30 customers. One, they deserve to get service. Two, my business model is known enough and flushed out enough that I can say, no, I can justify that cost. It makes a lot of sense. So I really appreciate you guys stepping into our industry and, and knowing, realizing that we're different than the, te the telcos, um, but we are just as important at, at be able to provide that broadband to people um, where they need it need it most. Yeah. So, um, yeah. What What do you think are some of the roadblocks? Um, you know, we kind of talked about the big bad, uh, you know, tower <laughs> companies. But what are some of the roadblocks that you've seen, or some of the things you've been trying to dispel and teach people that that you're uh, maybe it's not that way. I think the biggest thing right now is educating, not necessarily the masses, the government about fiber okay. versus wireless. Um, you know, I think a lot of the bills that have been, we've seen or the funding, it seems to be heavily, I won't say heavily focused, but you know, the perceptions that we mm -hmm. can just build fiber everywhere again, right. Going back, going back to Tommy and John, they're living three miles down the road. Are you going to build three miles mm -hmm. of fiber to put fiber right to their house and how long will that take and how much of that like cost? So that's really, that's really changing the perception that, and again, we're, we're here as a neutral you know host, we're here to help. Mm, provide mm -hmm. the provide the service provide the wireless broadband basically look at us as we're the landlord if you we can get you an apartment tomorrow and you can serve you know x amount of customers off our tower so that that that's i think that's the good the good thing i've seen is that that's starting to the education has increased and saying they're starting to become more understanding of how what that process looks like versus the cost and timing um so that i think that's that's one of the biggest ones um, and then outside of that, I think, again, it's, it's just, it's just perception versus reality of what, mm -hmm. of what can be done utilizing, you know, towers and whatnot. Yeah, I think you're right. And I, I really appreciate the work you guys have done to help 
the federal government and the FCC understand that wireless is a is a real option. Um, um, and it, it's interesting when you look at it. I I did up the numbers and and I, I I just I googled how how many miles of roads do we have in America, and I assumed that we would have to get on like eighty percent of those roads to provide everybody with fiber. Uh, and then you, depending on what map you believe 20 percent of americans have access to fiber so i took 20 percent of those roads off and then you kind of average out what it costs per per mile to build fiber and, and we need almost 500 billion dollars to build fiber to everyone yeah and, and even if you were to say okay here you have 500 billion dollars ready go how long is it you're take? still talking decades and decades yeah. and decades yep. so i'm not against fiber i think the right tool for the right job um but I think the immediacy of what COVID has shown us, I, I love the comment when people say, you know, that, that COVID was a time machine. It brought 2030 to 2020, uh, mm. you know, the, the everything online, all the ordering, all the schooling, all the work, you know, we need internet now today and, and your tower portfolio, uh, our wireless is going to allow us to do that. And, and I know a lot of business owners that, you know, once they, dealt with a company or like they write them off. I'm never going to deal with them again. That's ridiculous. I would encourage anybody to say, no, no, no. <laughs> um, COVID has changed a lot of things. The world changes, companies change, and you should go back and, and talk to the, the big bag tower companies that are big and bad anymore. <laughs> they're big, but they're not bad uh, and, and work with them. And, and I would encourage friendly. that of me. Any, yeah. Friendly, the big friendly tower companies. How's that? It's uh, perfect. I love it. Because, yeah, they, they have to. If they don't, then then they're going to miss out on those opportunities. And there's some huge opportunities coming uh, from our uh, from our in, for our industry. Yeah. And, and I mean, even to that, to your point about COVID, I, I think you put it perfectly. It brought 2030 into 2020 because, you know, when you have students having to go to a local library or local McDonald's to do their homework, you have you know, people working from home that do the same thing. It's it really just exposed. It's not about and I think obviously the word gets switched. I think it's unserved versus underserved. I think we got to focus mm -hmm. on the unserved is the most important part is, you know, these people, it's not just that, that they can't get, you know, 25 or hundred to play their video games. They can't get anything. And I think that's right. the most important thing around this. So I think that changing that narrative, I think is be very important going forward. Cause I think mm -hmm. yeah, the, the underserved that, that, that term tends to get misconstrued as far as like, oh, I only have 25 right now. I, I want to get a hundred. Like well, you got internet. Right. <laughs> you can, yes. Yeah. You can have, you, you can have five. You can Your mm -hmm. kids can play their video games online. You can have five iPads hooked up and you'll be fine. Good to go. You know, versus someone that has to right. really drive down, you know, drive a half mile to do their work or do their job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was, I was very happy that the, the infrastructure bill, and the guidance from the federal government said it was 25 by three. Anything less than that was considered unserved because I know several states are doing 100 by 100 or a gig by gig. And it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you did 100 by 100. That means every single cable modem in the U.S. is now considered unserved because they, mm. they can't do that. So now all that money is going to go back into the dense areas because that's where that's that's where the businesses want to go. And we need to make sure this money is is put out for the people who have zero G's, right? I don't yeah. want to upgrade somebody who has four G's. I'm looking at upgrading somebody who has zero G's to a four G type of a connection. And that's what Fish Wireless can do partnered with your towers. And um, we don't need to take a lot of time. Chuck's we're doing 20 new tower deployments a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's, it's amazing to see that we did, we did 60, 68 towers in, in a, in a three and a half month span they covered 104,000 locations. I mean, yeah, that's you awesome. can't even that's say that about yeah. fiber. It's like, wait a minute, 104,000 locations that some had service and some didn't, but yeah. the vast majority of them didn't have service. Now woke up one day and boom, they have access to service that they wanted. That's huge. You, you can't yeah. do that with any other medium. You can't do it with DSL. You can't do it with fiber. Mm -hmm. You can't do it with cable. And, and we're able to, to do that and, and show you guys our business plan and say, hey, <laughs> we need you to work with us. And what can we do to make this work? Because we're trying to build it out to the people who desperately need it. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, that's. A, I think that's a, another item to focus on is just speed to market. You know, obviously, mm, yeah, yeah bring, good point. Bring, 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 you know, the fact you're yeah. able to cover that many customers in that time frame is awesome. It's great to hear. You know, good luck right. building fiber to those people. 
And I'm not trying yeah. to disparage, but I'll take a step back. I'm not trying to disparage fiber. We have fiber to a lot of most of our towers. So, but it's yeah, just the I time and the frame of going of going to going to the home and um, you know what makes sense, cost right. cost wise and time wise. Yeah, yeah. So, what are you excited about? We'll wrap it up today. What are you excited about for 2022? Other than it's not 2020 and not 2021. <laughs> <laughs> what are you excited about? What, what, do you, what, do you, what gets I- you excited? I'm excited to see the growth. It's just, I mean, there's the technology advances. I know you guys are going to start using some, you know, you guys using the Toronto equipment, just yeah, the advancements right. that we're seeing. It's just, you know, how quickly it's accelerated. You know, again, I'll go back mm-hmm. to that. You know, I probably started working with WISP about you know six, seven years ago. And where that is from then to now is amazing in my mind. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, just the growth, the growth, the accelerated growth that we're going to see and it's continue with art off and, you know, the new bills are being signed and, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, it's going to benefit everyone. You know, it's, it's good. It's just really, it's really cool to see how, how quickly technology. And again, I think part of that too is again, going back to Toronto, they, you know, they, I think they saw a need and they're, they're stepping their game up to fill mm-hmm. that need. And, you know, obviously other, other equipment fires as well. So it, it's just, it's, it's great to watch. And it, I, I just love hearing the success stories of, uh, you know, again, to your point, you, you guys were able to cover 108,000. I think I had that number right, give or take. Yeah, 104,000. Give, <laughs> 104, give or take. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, give or take. Right. But yeah, that, that's it's it's just it's it's it's. it's I'll put it like this. I might sound like a nerd, but it's an exciting industry to uh, to be involved with. And it's I love it. It's, right. it's really it's a lot of fun and a lot of and again, success stories are are awesome. Helping you guys and helping other whips mm-hmm. to really provide service to customers that otherwise would just be shot like. Caught, well, I'm not gonna say any names, but other other uh, yeah. companies might just say we're not going to bring service to you. Mm-hmm. So. Right? Yeah, they've given the opportunity. I mean, if if the other companies were doing their job, um, I wouldn't have a business, right? I wouldn't need Whisper. But clearly, there's an opportunity out there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I you know I think back to you know back with what you were saying with I think the the, the saying is uh, when when the tide all all ships rise with the tide, right? When it helps everybody. I remember as short as two years ago, providing 100 meg down by 20 meg up was impossible. It's going to be really, really hard. Um, it was possible, but it was it was really hard, right? And and now we're looking at 100 meg down by 20 meg up is actually the low end of what we offer, and we yeah. offer 400 meg plans. And then there's gig on, on the horizon, very easy gig distances. So, you know, it, it it's amazing to see, like you said, how fast things are accelerating and. The, the government dollars are helping that because there is a big market out here that lots of people need internet. And now we're getting the funding to be able to build out and we're going to our manufacturers going, no, we have to have this. It has yep. to be able to do this. And, and they're stepping up and uh, doing that. So, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate you being on. I'm uh, glad, uh, glad really we got all the technical, technical <laughs> things worked out and uh, yeah. thanks for being being on my show. Hopefully by the next one, I'll have my tooth fixed. So thanks for being on my <laughs> show. With my tooth. <laughs> All right. Thanks. So, Talk uh, to you soon. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks everybody for joining us and thanks for, uh, for chiming in. You can watch us on Facebook or you can watch us on our YouTube channel. And uh, we just really appreciate you joining in. Hope you got something out of that. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone.